Lesson eight, part two, the dative case. The dative case is used in Greek for expressing an indirect object. This is the last main case we will learn. By way of note, there is also the vocative case, but it is very rare and almost always the same as the nominative case. It's used for nouns of direct address when saying the name of the person you're talking to, but we won't learn that case until Greek too. All right, so let's take a look. We've got the second declension masculine. We've already know os and u and the on down here. Now we're adding in omega with an iota subscript. Now, if we take a quick look at the others, you'll notice there are iota subscripts in all three um, of, the, of the declensions and all three of the genders here. We need an iota subscript. That is gonna be very, very, very important. So make sure you get that iota subscript in there. If you go to type, um, to type an iota subscript, uh, you need to hit shift. And then the, the thing that's next to the P, the, the bracket or brace, the left one. So you hit shift and that key, and then you hit the letter that you want it to go underneath of. So if I wanted to type this omega with an iota subscript, I would hit shift and the thing right to the right of a P uh, on the keyboard, and then I would hit an omega. So as, u, o, on, that is pronounced o. And then we've got oi, on, ois and oos. It actually is another iota in there, so that might help you remember those ones there. We got the iotas in the dative. Um, let's look across now at our neuter. It's exactly the same. We have o and we have ois. Remember we said before, the masculine and the neuter are typically the same, except for where the neuter rule of the nominative and singular always agreeing comes in. So the genitive and the dative are 100% the same. The accusative singular is the same, which then makes our, makes our nominative since those have to agree. Then we have this exception over here of the alpha in the plurals. If we come across to the first declension feminines, we have our on a or os and ace, the on ain we've already seen. Here we're going to have the alpha and eta thing going on again, each of them with an iota subscript for the data. We come across to the plurals. We've seen some, we've seen an i and an own and an os. Here we're going to have an ice. So very similar to what we saw in the masculine, where we've got oi and ois, we've got i and ice. Now this one doesn't quite follow that pattern of those two, because um, we would expect to see aus down here with an oops on, which we don't. We've got i own ice os. I own ice os. Now there's a note here about this, of course, don't forget a few first declension feminine nouns that end in alpha in the nominative singular will have eta endings in the genitive and dative singular. Only nouns we'll learn like this are doxa, glossa, and thalassa. So for those, it would be doxa, dox ace, dox a, dox on. Glossa, glossace, glossae, glossan. Thalassa, thalassace, thalassae, thalassan. They'll switch for the genitive and dative to the etas, and then they'll come back to the alphas. This chart here is now complete. We're not going to add anything else to it, like we've been adding the genitive and the dative in the middle. It would be helpful to memorize it. The easy way to do this is by memorizing a particular noun. So you could use the ones that I'm about to show you for that, or you can memorize it os, u, o, on, oi, on, ois, us, or you can memorize it with a noun like we're going to see in a moment here. Now note, the only difference between the second declension masculine and neuter charts is in the nominative and accusative. In the neuter, the nominative and accusative singular always match, and the nominative and accusative plural always match, always match like we've mentioned before. All right, so here's a nice chart that we can look at with actual nouns. So second declension masculine nouns, we've got logos, lagu, lago, lagon, lagoi, lago, and lagois, lagus. Second declension neuter, technon, technu, techno, technon, techna, technon, technois, techna. Now for me, I don't like to actually memorize the neuter separately. I like to memorize the masculine and then just make a mental note to myself that these three positions are different for the neuter. But if you'd rather memorize a whole neuter set, a whole neuter declension, you're welcome to do that as well. Here's a first declension feminine that switches doxa, doxes, doxe, doxon, doxi, doxone, doxis, doxos. 
or here's a first declension feminine where we have Adas. Phone, 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 For me, I would memorize one of these, probably phone, and just make some mental notes about what happens with the alphas. If we have something like Hemera, where the alpha stays all the way through, or Doxa, where the alpha does not stay all the way through. And of course, our lovely little note, remember, Doxa, Glossa, and Thalassa are the only words we'll learn that switch from alpha to eta. All right, our definite article is also now complete and can be memorized. So some people prefer to memorize it this way, ha he ta, tu te tu, to te to, tan te ta, and then it's same with the plurals. Uh, some people prefer to go down since that's the way that they've just memorized um, as, u, o, on. Here we have ha, tu, to, tan. Then we'd have he, taste, te, tain, ta, tu, to, ta. Hoi, tone, tois, tus. High tone tais tas and ta tone tois ta. Now, if we'll look at this line here for the data that we've just just added in, we can see the endings are exactly the same as what the endings are for our first and second declension nouns. So now that we're looking at this as a whole, the entire thing, what you can sort of make some mental notes of are if, if you're trying to fill out this chart put in all the endings that you find on the nouns first. Then add a tau in all of the positions except for these four up here, the masculine and feminine singular and the masculine and feminine plural in the nominative case. All of the rest of them get a tau. Then you can add in your rough breathings for those four positions and take off the news for the neuter, singular, nominative, and accusative. If you follow those steps, you will have the definite article chart perfectly every time. Now note, here's about some, some meaning things with the, with the date of case. In English, a proper indirect object, like I sent my mom a letter, must come between the verb and the direct object in an English sentence. So that's sort of helpful to have in your mind when you're translating. If you're doing a proper indirect object, one that isn't a, a prepositional phrase, it has to come before the direct object, has to come after the verb. In Greek, it can come anywhere in the sentence. But remember, the first word in the sentence is the one that is the most emphasized. So let's look at some examples. Didasco tain alefeyan ton adelfo. I am teaching the brother the truth. To adelfo is in the dative case, so it's going to be our indirect object. Tain ale, alefeyan is in the accusative case, so it's going to be our direct object. So in English, if this is going to be a proper indirect object, it's not a prepositional phrase. The indirect object goes between the verb and the direct object. So we're going to put it in that order. I am teaching the brother the truth. Now we can make the brother be an indirect object or be a prepositional phrase with the word to. So I am teaching the truth to the brother. Now we technically could put to the brother other places in the sentence, but it's not going to sound as good. To the brother, I am teaching the truth. Sounds a little weird. I am teaching to the brother the truth. Sounds a little funny. So at the end of the sentence is the best place to put that if you're going to make it a prepositional phrase. So I am teaching the truth, that's still our, our direct object, to the brother is now a prepositional phrase. It means the same thing though, because an indirect object is the person is the person receiving or where this direct object is going and here we have it as a prepositional phrase showing where it's going the truth is going to the brother here's another example tois apostolois ha theas apostele angelon so we have two different ways of saying that because we have here we have tois apostolois in the dative no sorry Yes, in the dative case. And then at the end here, we've got angelon in the accusative case. Hatheos is in the nominative because it's the subject. And then we have our verb over here, apostele. So tois apostolois, if we're going to make that a proper indirect object, God is sending the apostles an angel. Notice angel doesn't have a definite article. So we're going to say an, not the so God is sending the apostles an angel. An angel is what is being sent, and the apostles are the ones that are receiving it or the ones that he's sending it to. Because it's a proper indirect object, it needs to go between the verb and the direct object. 
or we can make it into a prepositional phrase. God is sending an angel to the apostles. The apostles are the ones receiving the angel. Here it's a prepositional phrase. In English, it is impossible to have an indirect object without a direct object. It's mainly because it has to come before the direct object. However, in Greek, this is sometimes possible. When translating these, always use the prepositional phrase construction using to in your translation. So here we have legusi tois anthropois. We've got a verb and we've got a dative case indirect object, but we have no accusative case direct object. So we're going to have to do this as a prepositional phrase. He is speaking to the men. Summary. The dative case is used to show an indirect object in Greek. In Greek, you can have an indirect object without a direct object. You can translate a word in the dative into English as an indirect object or as a prepositional phrase beginning with two.